Closed captioning for Lift Up Jesus is paid for by our friends at Galpin Ford of Los Angeles. I'm Kayla Francis, and if you're thinking I look vaguely familiar, it's because Pastor Dudley, host of Lift Up Jesus, is my dad. For a long time, I've had a heart for reaching women, particularly women who dream about having the talent, the position, and the passion for influencing this culture. And that's why we launched the LA Conference for Women Who Influence. This year's theme is Chosen, and I believe that this event could be your chance to step into your calling and become everything God has designed you to be. Join us on Saturday, September 21st, right here at Shepherd Church in Los Angeles. We have an amazing lineup joining me, including Carrie Champion, Crystal Evans Hurst, Dudley Rutherford, and even an exclusive video interview with Christine Kane. For more information and to register, please visit us online at shepherdchurch.com influence. This could be your moment to reach the next level in your career and your calling. Register today. It doesn't matter if you live in a nursing home or you go to elementary school, if you're rich, if you're poor, if you're a citizen or a non-citizen, if you've lived a good life, or if you have so much baggage that it looks like a Samsonite store, if you're a new Christian or a seasoned Christian, it doesn't matter, God can use you. Hello again, and welcome as we lift up Jesus with Pastor Dudley. I'm Michael North. Throughout the Bible, there are many examples of how God chose one person to make a difference for many, sometimes in a small way and other times significantly. Each of us has the potential to influence and effectively change the hearts and lives of others when we're willing to be used by God in the very same way. Over the next several weeks, Pastor Dudley is going to show us biblical stories that demonstrate how effective one small person can be in obedience with God. The Power of One. It's an amazing series that starts right now. Let's join Dudley. This is a story of the miracle where uh, Jesus fed 5,000 people with one little lunch. Many of you know this story, but many of you have never really studied and read through this story. But what I want you to know as I begin is that this miracle, Jesus performed a lot of miracles. Most of the miracles that Jesus performed are not recorded in all four of the Gospels. But this miracle, this miracle uh, interestingly, all of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four, when this miracle was performed, they all recorded it. There was a reason why they wanted us to know this story inside and out. And so part of this sermon, just so you know, I'm kind of giving you a heads up, I'm going to kind of be jumping back and forth from Mark 6 to John 6, uh, because there's some details that each of the writers give that are important uh, to our story. Now, as we begin, Jesus and the disciples are having a rough day. How many of you uh, ever have a rough day? Okay. So I want you to remember that as we go through this. It's an underlying point to this story that they're having a hard day. Earlier in Mark chapter 6, their beloved colleague, John the Baptist has his head cut off. They get the news that King Herod has beheaded John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And in many ways, he was the one that got all of this kick-started with his announcement that the Messiah uh, was, was about to appear. So they get the news that John the Baptist has had his head cut off. Also, you have at this point, uh, the crowds, the people are coming out of the woodwork, and the disciples are, are exhausted. 
They have worn themselves out ministering to people, performing miracles, teaching, casting out demons. And in verse 30 of Mark chapter 6, the apostles, they come to Jesus, and they let Jesus know everything that has happened. And you can only imagine the distress, the unsettledness that the disciples are experiencing. They, they are exhausted. And in Mark chapter 6, verse 31, it says that there's so many people were coming and going that they themselves did not have time to eat. And so Jesus is planning a little retreat so that they can all get a little R&R. And verse 31 says that Jesus says, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and let's get some rest. It's been a tough, a, a tough day. And so, verse 32 says, they went away by themselves by what mode of transportation? They went by boat to a solitary place called Bethsaida. Now, I want to show you a map of the Sea of Galilee. And again, if you ever go with us on one of our Israel trips, we, we take a boat ride across the Sea of Galilee. And I want you to find Capernaum. It's kind of in the northwest uh, corner of the Sea of Galilee. And if you look in the northeast corner, you'll see Bethsaida. And as a crow flies, it's probably only four miles. Uh, if you travel by road, the road's really windy. It's about seven miles. Uh, it's a little hilly in there. But Jesus says, let's go get some R&R. &R. So they get on a boat. We know this for a fact, that most of Jesus' ministry was spent in Capernaum. That's whenever you read the stories and the miracles and the parables, most, most often it, ha it happens in Capernaum. And so Jesus sees that they're exhausted. They themselves haven't eaten. The crowd is large. They want to get away for a little while. So they get out on a boat, and they travel along the shore. They're headed over there towards Bethsaida. Now, we know the winds during the springtime are coming northeast, so they're kind of in a headwind. They didn't have electric motors or engines back in those days. They had to row against the wind. So even though it's only about four miles away, it probably took them like two hours to get from Capernaum to the fishing village Bethsaida. But there's a problem. Here's the problem. Look at verse 33. When they got in the boat near Capernaum, there were many people who saw them get into the boat and recognized them. And the Bible says they ran on foot from all of the towns and that the crowds got there before they did. Can you picture this? The disciples are exhausted. Jesus says, let's get a little r and they, Let's get in the boat. So they get out into the water away from the people. But as they're rowing and trying to get to Bethsaida, all the people recognize them and they start running along the shore because they want to be a part uh, and see the healings and see the miracles. And some of them have loved ones who need to be healed. And they love these teachings. They're enthralled by the teachings. And Jesus comes and he's preaching love and forgiveness and and uh, all kinds of things. And so as they're rowing to Bethsaida, uh, the Bible says that the people are running along the shore. Imagine the commotion and the excitement, and they're all kind of pointing. And the Bible says when they land, the, 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 when they land, the crowds are there before the boat even arrives. Imagine the mind of the disciples. They had finally gotten away from the crowd to get a little R&R. &R. Imagine their surprise when they land to see a crowd of over 5,000 people, according to verse 44. It says that there were 5,000 men. If you take their wives and children, there could have been 10 to 20,000 people there when they arrived. So much for a little time off, right? But notice verse 34, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had what? He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And so even though they were tired and even though they were hungry, Jesus began to teach them many things. And the story goes that late in the day, it had been a full day, they're in a very remote place. As people are tired and, and, and hungry, over in John's account, Jesus turns to Philip, one of the 12, and he says to Philip, Philip, how are we going to feed all these people? And Philip says, we? What are you talking about, we? And Philip began to do the math. There's 5,000 people here, 5,000 families. There could be 10, 15, 20,000 people here. 
If I go down to the local fish and chips store and buy 5,000 plates at $5 a piece, that's $25,000. We only make about $500 a week, that's $2,000 a month. 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, 12,000, 12,000. 14,000. He says in John 6, verse 7, Philip answered Jesus, Jesus, eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of us to even have a single bite. Mark's account, Jesus turns to the disciples and asks the disciples, how many loaves do you have? And they all kind of look at each other like, well, we don't have anything either. I mean, we've been on the boat with you. We've, we haven't eaten ourselves. Then Jesus said, go and see. Everybody say, go and see. In other words, go out in that crowd and see what you can find. And it's in John's account that it was one of the disciples, Andrew, who finds a boy who's got a little lunch, and uh, he brings this little boy to Jesus, and in that little lunch, they had these five little loaves of barley loaves, and he had two little sardines. Now, I have them in a can. Because uh, they stink. <laughs> and uh, so you need to thank the pastor that I brought them in the can. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> so five loaves of bread, two little sardines. Imagine what that must have smelled like. And, and he says, how far will that go among us? In other words, uh, he said, Andrew said, Lord, what is that going to do us? We got close to 10,000 people here. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus then directed. Everybody say directed. Say, say Jesus directed. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. And so they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and he looked up to heaven, he gave thanks, and he broke the loaves. Then he gave them to who? To his disciples to set before the people. He also divided those two smelly sardines among them all. And verse 42 says they all ate and were what? Satisfied. I want you to take your hand, everybody take your hand and put it right on your belly and go, mmm. <laughs> you remember what Philip said? He said, if we spent eight months' wages, we wouldn't have enough food for everyone to have a single bite. If you have one bite of food, you're still hungry. Jesus took those loaves and those fish and divided and fed close to 10,000 people. And the Bible says all of them ate until they were satisfied. That's a lot of food, amen. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of leftovers. And the number of men who had eaten was about 5,000. The feeding of the 5,000, the miracle. There are several things I want to talk about that are important for us to see today. Here's the first point. Write this down. Jesus wants us as his disciples to do more than just point out problems. Many of us like to just point out problems people's problems and I want to show you uh, I didn't read this to you earlier but I want to read it to you here in Mark chapter 6 verse 35 by this time it was late in the day so his disciples came to him and they started to point out all the problems they said Jesus this is a remote place now how many of you know Jesus already knew that well he was the one that took him there uh, he said, this is a remote place, and they said, it's already very late. He said, Jesus, Jesus, do you know what time it is? Look, Jesus, it's, it's getting late, they said. And, and uh, why don't you send the people away? Uh, and and I, I give them some credit because when you have problems, you need to take them to Jesus. So I give them a little bit of credit. But they said, Jesus, why don't you send these people from the surrounding countryside to the village and, and let them buy something to eat? In other words, we're, we're hungry. It's late in the day. People are tired. There's nothing around here. But notice what Jesus said. He said, what did he say? You give them something to eat. Now, over in John's account, we read this, that Jesus already knew what he was going to do. Jesus already knew that he was going to feed all these people, but he did all this to test the disciples. I believe that God already has everything in control all the time. 
But what he wants is he wants us to be involved in the process because we have become professional critics. Some of us are really good at pointing out people's problems. Some of you think it's a spiritual gift that you have. (laughs) Oh, it's hot in here. Oh, it's too cold in here. It's too windy. It's crowded. The parking lot is so full. Well, if you got here on time, it wouldn't be full. Someone is sitting in my seat. (laughs) Jesus never wants us to complain or simply be people who point out problems. God wants you to be a part of solving the problems. (laughs) Think about this story. Jesus knew that he was gonna feed this crowd, but he had the disciples think through the problem. He had the disciples go and search for food. He had the disciples put people into groups of 50 and 100. He had the disciples go and gather the five loaves and the two fish. He had the disciples hand out the food to the people that were there. He had the disciples collect all the leftovers. God works through people who are willing to serve. So, Don't just point out the fact that there's a lot of lost people. Why don't you figure out a way how you can share the gospel with people who are lost? Just don't be people who point out there's a lot of homeless people on the streets of Los Angeles. Why don't you be involved in the solution to that problem and get involved in ministries like Hope of the Valley uh, Ministries or uh, down at the Dream Center in Los Angeles? Why don't you get involved in the process? Go buy you some tacos after church. (laughs) And feed yourself as well as the homeless. Don't just criticize that there's too many abortions in this country. Why don't you volunteer at the Crisis Pregnant Center? Or why don't you be willing to foster a child or even adopt a child? Don't just complain about the waywardness of the youth in our society. Become a youth sponsor. Ask our youth pastor, Dusty, or our children's pastor, Mike Williams, how you can serve in the children's department. And don't complain that there's too many shallow Christians living here in the United States. Why don't you host a life group at your house to help mature believers that are new in the faith. And don't complain that it's too difficult to get in and out of the parking lot. Why don't you sign up to serve in our guest services team as a parking attendant so that people can get home safely and efficiently? Roll up your sleeves, spend time in prayer and ask God how he can use you to be a part of the solution. Amen and amen. Number two, write this down. Jesus cares for people in need regardless of how they ended up in their situation. This is so important because if we're not careful, our hearts get so calloused that whenever we see someone who's less fortunate, and let's be honest, everywhere you go, you see people who are less fortunate than you. But if we're not careful, we come up with a long list of excuses why we're not going to help them. Like they deserve their situation. They shouldn't have dropped out of school. Why, if they had... Uh, paid attention in school like I did, they wouldn't be in the situation that they're in. They are probably just scamming me. They're professional panhandlers. Or we use this excuse all the time. They, they're just going to use that money on drugs or alcohol. Or if, if they can stand on the corner and ask money for, for me, then they can work at a hamburger joint and ask people if they want fries with their hamburgers, Right? Jesus could have come up with all kinds of excuses not to help the folks on that crowd that day. Why, he could have blamed them for not thinking ahead. He could have blamed them for their, pers- for their lack of personal responsibility. Why, he could have blamed the disciples for not having saved enough 
funds to take care of the less fortunate. Uh, he, he, Jesus could have said this. He said, if I do this miracle for you, then you're just going to be back here tomorrow looking for another miracle so you can simply have your bellies full. Jesus could have demanded, if you're going to come and hear me speak, it's going to cost you $49 to hear me speak, but I will include a box lunch with that $49. But the Bible says in verse 34, you saw this earlier, Jesus saw the large crowd. He had compassion on them because they were sheep without a shepherd. He made no excuses, and he knew as soon as he saw them that he was going to feed all 5,000 or 10,000 of them. And all I want you to know is we should be like Jesus. <laughs> Number three, Jesus used a young child, just a young child to bless all the people. It wasn't just a boy, it was a young boy. And the original Greek text, the word that is used here for this child is found nowhere else in the entire Bible, so the audience is clear about this boy's stature. It's not just a child, it's a, it's a young child. We believe that he was probably seven or eight years of age. The smallest, weakest, most powerless among them all. He was the lowest on the totem pole, and yet he's the one there with something to offer. And Jesus takes this boy's lunchbox and he feeds the entire crowd. And some people, as they read through this story, they assume that the miracle is that Jesus fed 5,000 people with just five loaves and a couple of fish. But the real miracle is that Jesus chose to work through a young child to bless the masses. Don't ever underestimate who God can use. And that's really the point of this entire series, that no matter who you are, that God can use you in a great way. It doesn't matter if you're a man. It doesn't matter if you're a woman. This week, it doesn't matter if you're a young, a young child. It doesn't matter if you have gray hair or no hair, or you got one hair and you just got it wrapped around and it looked like you have hair. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you live in a nursing home or you go to elementary school, if you're rich, if you're poor, if you're a citizen or a non-citizen, if you've lived a good life, or if you have so much baggage that it looks like a Samsonite store, if you're a new Christian or a seasoned Christian, it doesn't matter, God can use you. I heard about an orchestra, they were rehearsing, and about halfway through the rehearsal, the trumpets were just blaring and the drums were banging and the violins were stringing and there was this little piccolo player who was muttering to himself, what good am I doing with those trumpets and the drums and the violins? I might as well not be playing. No one can hear me anyway. And so he held up the piccolo to his mouth, but he didn't play. He just acted like he was playing but he made no sound. And within seconds, the conductor said, stop, stop! Where's the piccolo? <laughs> it was missed by the most important person, the conductor. And in similar fashion, I don't care who you are, don't think that, you don't, that you're not important or that you're serving or your gift is not important to this large church because it matters to the most important person, the Almighty God. As Christians, we know God has called each of us to stand boldly and allow Him to use us to make a difference in our world. We encourage you to join us again next week as Pastor Dudley continues today's message, The Boy and His Lunchbox. We also want you to know that this entire sermon series, The Power of One, is available right now on DVD. Here's how you can get yours. In today's distracted and networked world, we often forget the power of a single person. But with God, all things are possible, including one person's victory over any obstacle in your way. What's the challenge you're facing? What situation looks hopeless to you right now? Or do you feel alone? For the first time ever, the Lift Up Jesus team has compiled eight powerful teachings from Pastor Dudley Rutherford on the power of one. 
We've brought this once in a lifetime package together in a CD or DVD, as well as small group resources you can share with your Bible study or small group. For the gift of only $75 or more to help us continue sharing this life-changing message with the world, we'll ship your copy of The Power of One today. Each of us has the potential to influence and affect change in the hearts and lives of others when we're willing to be used by God. Call, write, or go online and order your copy today. You know, Pastor Dudley enjoys hearing from everyone watching him through this ministry. Your emails, phone calls, and social media contacts are very important to him. We want you to know you can also write to Pastor Dudley at our mailing address, Lift Up Jesus Ministry, 19700 Rinaldi Street, Port Ranch, California, 91326. Again, that's Lift Up Jesus Ministry, 19700 Rinaldi Street, Port Ranch, California, 91326. Your financial support, large or small, is greatly appreciated. You can be assured your gifts to this ministry go directly to help touch and change the lives of many who are hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ for the very first time. Someone just like you helped us to be here on this station you're watching right now. Your partnership gift can help us reach into more cities and to new viewers across America in the very same way. So if Lift Up Jesus has been a blessing to you, please take just a moment to write, call, or visit our website and click the Give button today. I'm Kayla Francis, and if you're thinking I look vaguely familiar, it's because Pastor Dudley, host of Lift Up Jesus, is my dad. For a long time, I've had a heart for reaching women, particularly women who dream about having the talent, the position, and the passion for influencing this culture. And that's why we launched the LA Conference for Women Who Influence. This year's theme is Chosen, and I believe that this event could be your chance to step into your calling and become everything God has designed you to be. Join us on Saturday, September 21st, right here at Shepherd Church in Los Angeles. We have an amazing lineup joining me, including Carrie Champion, Crystal Evans Hurst, Dudley Rutherford, and even an exclusive video interview with Christine Kane. For more information and to register, please visit us online at shepherdchurch.com slash influence. This could be your moment to reach the next level in your career and your calling. Register today. Join us every week for another life-changing message from Pastor Dudley. You can visit us anytime on our website and discover the many resources available there to help you with your daily Christian walk. And while you're there, please consider partnering with us to help support this ministry. Pastor Dudley has a burden to reach the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we can only do that with your financial help. You can also connect daily with Pastor Dudley through many forms of social media. We thank you for being a part of this ministry and invite you to join us again next week at the same time. Remember, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. Jesus.